we have covered the three main blood vessels, which are the artery, arterioles, and capillaries in the previous video. And in this particular video, we are going to be looking at venules and veins. Well, not exactly venules, because all we just have to know about venules are they're just smaller versions of veins. But in terms of structure and function, they are pretty much the same. The venules drain the blood into the vein, and the vein just has to transport the blood back to the heart. That's about it. Uh, before we look at the structure of the veins in detail, I want to talk a little bit about the capillaries, okay? Now, if you remember, the capillaries are just one cell thick, and they also have a very narrow lumen. The lumen is so narrow, which is 7 micrometers, by the way, uh, the lumen is so small that it can only fit one red blood cell. The red blood cells can only travel in a single line. So, in that case, when the red blood cells are moving, uh, they will be moving quite slowly because they want to allow exchange to happen. But then they will drain into venules. Now, as you can see, the capillaries have a smaller volume of blood. But when it goes into the venules, the volume of blood becomes larger. So when the volume of blood becomes larger, the wall has to be slightly thicker than the capillaries to accommodate that slightly larger volume of blood. Because if the wall of the venules remain thin, like the capillaries, the wall might burst because it cannot withstand the uh, mass or the pressure that the higher volume of blood is exerting against the wall. Hence why the venule will actually need to have a... Um, thicker wall. So, and then from the venules, it drains into the vein. Now, in terms of vein structure, three-dimensional view, you can see that it has a thin wall, but the wall is not as thin as capillaries, and they also have a relatively large lumen. Okay. Now, notice the when we are looking at the longitudinal view, the longitudinal view of the vein starts off with the innermost layer, and the innermost layer is made up of the one cell thick endothelium. And it's the same thing as like in the artery, it's to minimize the friction of the blood flow. And I'm also labeling the large lumen like that. Now, the second layer is the middle layer, which has the smooth muscles, elastic fiber, and collagen fiber, same as the arteries. The only difference is the middle layer is quite thin, and they also have a thin outer layer made up of elastic fiber and collagen fiber. Immediately you go, hey, wait a second, this is the same as the arteries because the artery has the inner layer of endothelium, a thin middle layer of smooth muscle, elastic fiber and collagen fiber, and a thin outer layer of elastic fiber and collagen fiber. The vein is similar. The only difference is the middle layer and the outer layer for the veins are quite thin compared to the arteries because they don't need to withstand a very high pressure. So they don't have to worry about bursting. All right. Now, but they still need to have the middle and outer layer to accommodate the large volume of blood flowing through the blood vessel. And of course, the cross-section, when, when I'm drawing the cross-section, notice that the shape, uh, I'm just drawing on the endothelium and the middle layer and also the outer layer, I'm going to label it. The cross-section of the vein shows that it has a rather irregular shape compared to the arteries uh, because the arteries have a rather circular cross-section, but veins have a more irregular-shaped cross-section. That is how you would recognize a vein from an artery. A vein usually is quite irregular in its shape when it comes to its cross-section, whereas arteries are circular. Simple as that. Now, there is a problem I want to talk about when we are covering the vein. So as you can see, I'm just drawing a simple diagram here, an artery, capillary, and vein. Now, I know they are supposed to be arterioles and venules in the middle, but I just want to simplify this diagram. Now, as a reminder, the pressure in the artery is at its highest, and as the pressure goes further away, it becomes lower in the capillary, and when it enters the vein, the pressure is at its lowest. Now, it poses a problem for the vein, because why is... Pressure important. Pressure is important because it is the force that pushes the blood forward. Okay, when there is a higher pressure, the blood uh, gushes through the blood vessels quickly. But when the pressure is very low, it just trickles through. Okay, with a lot of difficulty. What's the problem? 
If you remember, the function of the vein is to transport blood back to the heart. I'm drawing out a leg over here, and in this leg, uh, in this leg, you can actually see the veins. Now, uh, the blood is going into the smaller veins, and from the smaller veins, it's going upwards into a larger vein. Now, remember, pressure in the vein is low. So as the pressure is low and it's pushing the blood upwards, the blood will have difficulty moving upwards, and there is another problem. The other problem is there is an opposing force acting against the blood flow because when the blood is going upwards, there's a force pushing it downwards and that force that is pushing it downwards is gravity. So why is this a problem? Well, because as the blood is slowly trying to go upwards with its low pressure, gravity pushes it the opposite way and this causes the blood to be stuck midway. And this is not good because it stops the blood flow in the vein. So this is a huge problem. So what is the solution? How did we evolve to solve this problem? This problem can be solved with two ways. Number one, it can be solved with the skeletal muscles. Now, please be... I just want to tell you that skeletal muscles are not smooth muscles. These muscles are just like, you know, your leg muscles that causes your legs to move or your feet to move. And these muscles can be surrounding the veins, not just the veins in your legs, but the veins in your hand, uh, torso and neck and head. Okay. Now, so these muscles surround the vein and the veins also have something called valves. Okay, let's look at them in detail. So how do valves and skeletal muscles solve the problem? I'm drawing a simple vein and the pink color highlight in the vein is, for example, blood. Okay, And as you can see, the blood is just stuck midway right there. Now, next to the vein, there is a skeletal muscle. Now, when the skeletal muscle contracts, especially when you move your feet or you move your leg, the muscle squeezes, the muscle becomes shorter and it becomes thicker. When it becomes thicker, it presses against the vein and it squeezes the vein. Now, why is this good when it squeezes the vein? It's because when the vein is squeezed, it pushes the blood upwards, which is a good thing. Now, the skeletal muscle will then relax, but when the skeletal muscle relaxes, the vein is no longer squeezed and the blood may move downwards. Now, do we want that to happen? We don't want that to happen, do we? Okay, because that's not a good thing. Okay, right? So what's the solution to prevent the backflow? Now go back to the left diagram. As you can see, I'm drawing out those greenish structures in the vein. I hope you can see that over there. The diagram is a bit clear. That's the valve right there, which I've labeled. Okay, and the valve in that case is closed. When the skeletal muscle contracts, the valve will open and the blood flows through the valve. And when the skeletal muscle relaxes, the valve closes again. And when the blood wants to rush back downwards, it's not able to rush back to its original position because the valve is preventing it from doing so. So the, when the valve prevents backflow, this ensures that blood in the vein is able to fight against the force of gravity. That is how it's able to solve the problem of the low blood pressure within the veins. In the longitudinal view, as a reminder, it has the thin layer and outer layer, but I'm also adding in its large loop. Uh, I'm also adding in the semilunar valves. The semilunar valves are formed from the endothelium, and the function of the semilunar valves in the vein is to prevent the backflow of blood. That's basically it. So why is backflow dangerous? This is just an extra bit of information. You don't need to know this for the exam. But if the blood, if the backflow of blood happens, it will cause the blood to slow down and stop. And when blood slows down and stop, the red blood cells will tend to congeal and group up together. And when they group together, they will form something known as blood clots. And this can be quite dangerous because this is a kind of semi-solid mass. Now, blood clots, generally, when they are formed, your body can destroy them by itself, but some blood clots become a bit too big to be spontaneously or automatically destroyed. Uh, so your body has difficulty breaking them down. And large blood clots can travel inside your body, and when they move into blood vessels, again, as you can see here, the blood, the blood clot is moving through the, through the artery and it has no problems, but when it's stuck in the arterioles, 
any blood flow to the adjacent capillaries will be stopped. And any cells which are supposed to receive the blood in the capillaries will die because there is no longer any proper blood flow in that area. So blood clots can block blood vessels which will lead to body cells dying. And this can be quite a serious thing. Especially if it happens in the heart, it may lead to a heart attack. And if it happens in the brain, it may lead to a stroke because the brain cells will die. That is why valves and the skeletal muscle contraction in the vein are extremely important because they ensure that the blood is constantly flowing in one direction and backflow does not happen.